preface this message also by saying this. It's like somebody has a billion dollars in their bank account that they don't know about. So they continue their life every day in poverty. They struggle. They, they get into debt because they don't know they have a billion dollars sitting in their bank account. And they can carry on all day long and, and, and struggle all week long. And they can month after month, year after year, struggle and struggle and struggle. Why? Because they don't know what God has purchased for us. What did he purchase for us? The blessing of Abraham. Let's talk about it. By the way, they try to do a calculation of how much Abraham would be worth in today's dollars. And... They really can't come to an exact figure, but they estimate it's in billions. Okay, now we're not talking about just the physical part. We, well, obviously, the physical is going to be connected with this, but it's the spiritual first that we are blessed with. And, and see, may God sanctify you. First Thessalonians chapter 5 says, May God sanctify you, holy spirit, soul, and body. The body is the last thing mentioned there. Spirit is the first thing mentioned. You and I, when we gave our life to Jesus, we became prosperous in, in so much. I mean, beyond words. But a lot of us don't realize it. A lot of us, when we got saved, it was just, right on, I'm going to heaven now. Well, that's just one part of the blessing. We've been translated into the kingdom of Jesus. We are now kingdom of heaven citizens. The kingdom's a big place, and it's a very prosperous place. But, you know, when you read Hebrews chapter 11, and you go through, it says that they were looking for a city. That they knew they were just pilgrims. They were just pilgrims traveling through this earth. And, but they were looking under that city. What was that city? The new Jerusalem that would come down from heaven that we read about in Revel, at the end of Revelations. And so they were looking to that city. They were, even though God had promised a beautiful land to Abraham, he was traveling in that country looking to that city that God had built. Not built by the hands of man, but built by God. And that's the city they were looking for. The new Jerusalem that would one day come down from heaven to planet earth. It is 1,500 miles long, 1,500 miles wide, and it's 1,500 miles high. That's, that's the, it gives us the dimensions of the city of Jerusalem in Revelations. And so it's a huge city. And where is it going to park itself? It's going to take over the Middle East, right where Israel is right now. It's going to plop down right there. Praise God. So I want to go see Israel before, before the New Jerusalem comes. Right? That would be cool to go see New Jerusalem and go to Israel. And just to check it out and see where Jesus had walked and, and, uh, and things. And just take the atmosphere and take the environment in. Eh? Praise God. Anyhow. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. Have you found it? It says uh, in verse 1, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country. From your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Praise God. So Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, he says unto, uh, I'm going to give you, I'm sending you to a land that I will show or I will approve for you. The, the, the King James Version says shoo, shoo. It actually means show. It's Old English. Shoo. S-H-E-W. Shoo. Shoo you. Shoo, shoo thee. Shoo thee. <laughs> this is the old English. But it's show you in the modern day English. Show you. So Ab God said to Abraham, I'm bringing you unto a land that I will show you or 
The, Greek, the Hebrew word actually means approved for you. You need to understand something. God who desires to lead us by his spirit would like to lead us to the place in our life that we would serve him. I never thought I'd be in Flin Flon. Why am I in Flin Flon? I'm here to serve God. Why are you here? You might have been born here. Maybe you moved here. Why are you here? To serve God. Now, if you're not supposed to be here, then you're in the wrong place and you need to pray and find out where God wants you to be. Maybe it's somewhere else in the world. Maybe it's somewhere else in Canada. Who knows where. But if this is where your heart is, this is where you know you should be, then this is the place where God called you to be so that you would flourish as you serve him. As you serve him. So he'll lead you, he'll lead you to the spouse, he'll lead you to the right church, he'll lead you to the right education, he'll lead you to the right job, and he'll lead you to the right calling. He'll do all that. But you need to be willing, as Abraham was willing. See, Abraham, uh, he was willing 99% or 98% of the, uh, 98% willing to do what God called him to do. The one problem he did is he took his uh, nephew Lot. His daughter, he did say, leave your family, did he not? He said, get out of your country, from your family. The word family there means from your birthplace, your, your nativity. Uh, it goes on and says your native country. So get out of your country, get out of your uh, family, get away from your family, and from your father's house, the place you were born. This is what God said to Abraham. Or Abram at the time. He changed his name to Abraham later on. So then we see in Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, he says this, And I will make of thee a great nation. I'll make you of a great nation. Now, I mentioned last week, we're the children, we're part of the great family of God. There, is, there are brothers and sisters in every country of this world that are born again, spirit-filled, loving Jesus. All over the world. And you can, you can spot your brother and sister if you're walking in the Spirit, which you are if you've been born again, and if you're being led by the Spirit, which that could be a question because there's a lot of people that can be led carnally. Uh, and, and unfortunately, a lot of us have a tendency to go on the carnal side of things. What do I mean by carnal? Well, this I want to do what I feel to do. Well, I feel like going to church or I feel like not going to church. That's being carnally led. Well, and then, and then if you're, maybe you don't have any feeling about going to church. Maybe you're just thinking, well, is he going to preach on that Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8 again? Well, then I don't really want to be there because I've heard him preach Ephesians. I've heard that verse. Don't be stupid. There is so much more to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8, and that's what I'm doing. I'm expounding what God is saying there and declaring to us. And if you get bent out of shape, so you're letting your head get in, in the way of you being obedient to God. That's being carnal. Are you here? So, and we do this all the time. God might speak to you and say, why don't you go and read the Bible? And you're like, but my favorite show's on right now. That's being carnally led. That's being carnally led. Uh, you know, the, you, 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 uh, all of a sudden you're like, oh, family's coming over. I'm going to skip doing anything for God. That's being carnal. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And Jesus actually has some, some strong things to say. But when we see this, that he'll make a great nation out of us. Well, we're part of a great nation called the family of God. We're part of the kingdom of Jesus. We're citizens of heaven. Praise God. We're part of a great nation already. And uh, it goes on and says this uh, in chapter uh, 12, verse 2, and I will bless thee. The Greek word, or the, not Greek, but the Hebrew word for bless is the, Greek, the Hebrew word barak. It's barak. And this is what it means, to kneel. Okay, I'm going to stop there for a moment. God says, I will bless you. 
the meaning of this word is to kneel. To kneel. So God says, I will kneel to you. Now, that sounds really weird, doesn't it? Wait a minute, he's God. Well, like, hang in there. Hang in there. It also means to bless God as an act of adoration. And vice versa, man as a benefit. So the benefit, God, when he, God says, I will bless you, he was going, what he was saying is, Abraham, I'm going to cater to you. I'm going to cater to you, Abraham. Now, let's keep going. He's going on, and he says, it says this about this. Now, listen, in the, in the uh, Strong's Concordance, there's X's in front of words, and, and what that actually means is multiply. So this is what it means. X abundantly. This is a b- word blessing. In other words, multiple, uh, multiple abundantly. Multiply abundantly. Multiply abundantly. Abraham, God said to Abraham, if you can count the sand on the, on the, sh- on the, on the ground here, then you'll be able to figure out how many descendants you're going to have. And then he said, look up at the stars. If you can count all the stars that are up above you, then you'll be able to count your descendants. And of course, that was, it's innumerable. The stars out there are innumerable, just as the sand on the beach is innumerable. And how long has it been, right? So, so, so when, he, when God said, I will bless you, it was multiply abundantly. Now listen, multiply, multiply all together. Multiply at all. At all. Uh, it goes on declaring this. It, this is what, I'm just going to read the definitions here. Uh, bless, congratulate, multiply greatly. Multiply indeed. The word kneel down comes back. Kneel down, praise, salute, multiply still. Thank. This is the word bless in the, in the Hebrew, the Hebrew word barak. Now, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. In other words, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, when they use the word blessed, if we look at the old Hebrew word for blessed, that means that I have been multiplied abundantly, you and I have been multiplied abundantly, with spiritual multiplication in heavenly places in Christ. In other words, all of heaven's resources that were given to Jesus in Christ have been now given to you in Christ. Anybody getting a little excited at least a little bit here? Praise God. Blessed, let me read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 again. Blessed be the God of our Father, uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with uh, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So where is it? It's in the anointing. So why is it so important for us to understand the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit of God is the anointer that anointed Jesus, making him the anointed And it's the same Holy Spirit that Jesus said is expedient that I should leave. It's so important that I should leave so that I can send the Holy Spirit to you. And so praise God, he did leave. And he did send the Holy Spirit. And on the day of Pentecost, it says that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues like we've been doing in the service. Now, some of you are wondering, what, what was going on here when we were singing and you couldn't understand anything we were, we were saying? We were singing in tongues. The Bible actually says, the Bible actually says that uh, in John chapter 4, Jesus himself said this. He said, uh, the true worshipers will be the ones that worship God the Father in spirit and in truth. Well, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You've received Jesus into your life, 
But not only did you receive Jesus, you receive his word. And so as, you, uh, uh, as you're obedient to his truth, right, you're obedient to his truth, praise God. But what's the spear part? And I've heard so many pastors and so many different people try to say so many different things. Why try to figure it out when you're trying to figure it out? It's just going to mess it up anyways. Let's find out what the Bible says. The Bible will always interpret itself, by the way. You need to, you need to be able to dig into it and find out where, it's, where it helps you to understand it. So where does it say about uh, we're singing and worshiping God in spirit? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. It gives a very detailed lesson there of, of the whole purpose of that chapter is really to edify the church with prophetic words. And that if you are speaking in tongues and the prophetic word is coming forward, the person speaking in tongues should be quiet so the prophetic word can come forward so that the church can be edified. But when we sing in tongues, nobody understands it. But what's happening? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that my spirit is being built up. I'm speaking to God. Mysteries. Did you know that when we pray in tongues, we're speaking mysteries? Praise God. So that's why we, we're a church that speaks in tongues here. And, uh, and we're not going to be ashamed to tell, say that. We're not going to be ashamed to do it. Because Jesus died on the cross for us to have the promise of the Holy Spirit. He redeemed us from the curse of the law so that we'd have the promise of the Holy Spirit. If you read that verse in Galatians chapter 3, verse uh, 13 there, it tells you that the, uh, uh, the reason why we were blessed or redeemed was because we would have the promise of the Holy Spirit. Well, with the promise of the Holy Spirit comes everything the Holy Spirit has to offer, which is the, listen, oh, when we look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in the anointing. Who's who gives the anointing? The Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. It's the Holy Spirit that anointed Jesus. In other words, your heavenly blessings, my heavenly blessings, all the blessings of heaven are through the Holy Spirit. Everything blessing that he mentions there is in the anointing. And when we try to walk outside of the anointing or when we try to walk away and try to figure things out on our own, what you're doing is negating the blessing that's in the spirit. And that's why when you and I go and try to figure things out in our own heads, it will lead to death. Why? Because you are doing things in your own strength, in the power of your own abilities, which is which has been tainted with the corruption of sin and the fall of mankind. And you trying to figure things out on your own is only going to lead to death. But when we begin to be led by the Spirit, it will produce life. And it will change things dramatically in our lives because it's done with all the blessings of heaven through the Holy Spirit into our lives. Hallelujah. Praise God. Is this helping anybody yet? Hallelujah. So Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. Let's look at the next one. And make thy name great. And, and you know God wants your name to be great? The, he, doesn't want, uh, he doesn't want that when people mention Tom, that they go, oh. You know, what, and listen, you and I can't make our name great outside of the Holy Spirit. It is the blessing of it that was on Abraham. The reason his name became great is because God elevated his name. Your name will be elevated as you are obedient uh, to, the, to the Lord. And as you, be, as, you, as you continue to be led by the Holy Spirit, great things will take place in your life and around your life that's going to cause people to go, 
Huh. I used to know this, Tom. But it's not the same Tom. It's a different Tom. And then they'll go up to Tom and say, Tom, what's so different about you? You can start telling about Jesus. And what Jesus, but it's not, it's, it's, Shula Makanda, Sikara Matundrebe, Shela Makunda, Bakit, Shile Kumbre, and Salama, Shile Kara, and make your name great by the Holy Spirit. See, one of the things that I, when I, when I was, um, the Lord had called me to do traveling ministry back in 2013, 2012, 13. But I said to the Lord, I'm not going to be the person that elevates my name. I'm not going to go out and solicit churches to give me, you know, get me to come and speak in their church. I said, I, this is what I said to God. I said, God, if this is what you want me to do, then you're going to make it happen. And, uh, and I remember that one of the first calls I got was from a pastor in, in Thunder Bay. And uh, you got to remember, the Finnish Pentecostal church. I, I preached there once in 1994 and uh, never got invited again. Okay. <laughs> and, and I never... <laughs> Well, it, I guess it didn't help that I took a trumpet, and I was hiding my trumpet under my jacket, and I walked up to the pulpit, and the microphone's right there, and I put the trumpet right in the microphone, and I gave it a big blast. <laughs> and, uh, and, <laughs> and I tell you, there was, oh, I, could just, I could just picture the side of my eye. I could see all these heads going like this, and everybody's just getting shocked, right? I think I woke up one guy. He was in deep sleep, and he got woke up. But anyways... Um, uh, and that was the start of my message, and I, my message, and I remember the message. I remember, I remember it so clearly. It was, uh, wake up, church. That was the message, wake up. So I never got invited back, and uh, since 1993, until, until 2012. And 2012, uh, no, I think it was, no, no, it was 2010. 2010, 11, yeah, around there, 2010, 11. Uh, actually, 2000, yeah, I don't know, it's around there. It's around there. Pick a number. Pick a number, it's there. <laughs> and the pastor was praying, he, and he called me, so this pastor from the Finnish Pentecostal, he called me up and he said, he said to me, he said, Mikhail, I was praying, and the Lord told me that you are to speak in the church. So would you come and speak? And I said, yeah, I'll do that. And we had a great service. That's my alarm. Okay, I'm done now. Uh, but that's what happened was the, the, the pastor asked me to come, and so we had a great service. People got healed. People got saved. People that were, weren't sure about their gifts were encouraged that it was God calling to do, operate in those gifts. And great things took place. And it was exciting. Now, I haven't gotten called back since. <laughs> but God began to open the doors. And you can either try to make your name great or let God make your name great. And every time you try to make your name great, that's why you don't, you don't see me trying to push things. I, I used to try to push the testimonies, the praise reports to the other pastors in our district just to let them know what uh, God was doing. And, uh, and, and I guess behind there a little bit was like, hey, look what's happening in our church, guys. You know, and uh, it never really went anywhere. Pastors actually got fed up with all the testimonies. The pastors got fed up hearing the testimonies. I had one pastor say to me, he says, would you stop sharing those testimonies and they weren't like I was sharing the same testimony again and again and again. It was always new testimony. And, uh, and I was like, what sad state of affairs that church is in if that pastor is saying, I don't want to hear the testimonies anymore. Praise the Lord. Anyways, he'll make your name great. And Proverbs chapter 22 verse 1 says, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. 
Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 says this, And thou shalt be a blessing. Thou shalt be a blessing. The word uh, blessing there is a, a different, barah uh, kao. Barah kao is the Greek word or the Hebrew word for that word. And this is what it means. Benediction. Prosperity. And you shall be a benediction or you shall be prosperity. It goes on describing this word as liberal. Not liberal as the liberal party. Okay, not the same thing. Liberal here would go with James chapter 1 where, God, where it says there that God is a liberal giving God. In other words, he's an extravagant want to give God. Listen, some of you are like been praying for something. This came into my spirit. Some of you have been praying for something and you haven't been seeing it. And you're wondering why God is holding it back for you. He's not actually holding it back. It's already been, it's there. Extravagantly, the answer is there for you. How you access it is by faith. Just because you have a need doesn't mean God will respond to your need. God will not respond to your need. Let me say that again. God will not respond to your need. Why? Because need, where did need come from? Need came from the fall of mankind when man sinned. And when they sinned, God could not respond to their need because it was from sin. Yeah, and that's where it is. The faith is what God responds to but not the need. And that's why some people some some people who are Christians or used to be Christians or became backslidden Christians, some people became backslidden because they prayed for something that never happened and things got worse. Come on. And they're like, where is this loving God? Where is this so compassionate God? Where is this loving God of yours? Well, he's there. He's been there all the time. He's done something about the mess you're in. He did it 2,000 years ago in Christ Jesus. He has sent his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is on planet Earth covering the whole entire planet. What God is doing here by his Holy Spirit, he's doing somewhere in South Korea. Right now he's operating in churches there by his Spirit. And so, so he has done something about the predicament. He's done something about your situation. He's done something about the problem. He's done something. And how you and I get God to move or, or get that what he's done for us to happen in our life is by faith. Without faith, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, without faith it's impossible to please God. It says it right there in the Bible. It's impossible. You, and Romans chapter 5 says that we access the grace of God. What is the grace of God? It's the power of God. It's the power of Christ. It's the strength of God. And that strength is what we need. How do you access the strength of God when you're weak? By faith. He says, come boldly into the throne room of grace. Holding fast your confessions, he says in Hebrews chapter 4. Holding fast your confession. What's your confession? Your confession of faith. Because Hebrews chapter 4 says that the Israelites did not enter the promised land because of unbelief. God had the promised land already laid out for them. It was a land flowing with milk and honey. And he said, this is what I've given to you. It's yours to take. Go and take it. But what hindered the Israelites from taking it was their unbelief. Because what happened was they started looking at the circumstances. They sent spies in there, 12 spies, to look at the land. And they said, it's truly flowing with milk and honey. It is a great land. And then they turned around, but. See, they, they threw the but in there. But it's got great people as well. Big people, strong people, fortified cities, armies. We're just, we're just you know, uh, journeying through this desert. We don't got an army. All we got is sticks and stones. You know, and, and they were looking at what they saw. They compared it to what, where they were at. And they completely forgot the word of God. They forgot about God's promise. 
And therefore, what happened was they looked at the land and they had unbelief because they were looking at the circumstances. And this is the problem with every Christian right now that is praying for something. They're seeing they're in a problem, they're in a mess, and they're praying for something, and, and but they're seeing the problem, and the problem is speaking louder than what God says. And that's the problem with us as believers. That's why we need to continue to be in the Word, continue to hear the Word. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. And when you get that faith, you can stand up to whatever situation is coming against you by faith and say, this is what the Lord, Word of the Lord declares. I'm done with this. In Jesus' name. Praise God. So we see that God's Word is a Word that is for us. He's not against us. Amen. And he said, you'll be a blessing. You'll be prosperous. Now, benediction. Listen to this. It says benediction. I thought, well, what's benediction? I, I've heard benedictions. I've heard it in Bible college. They said, give the benediction. And that was usually at the end of the service. Give the benediction. And it became such a religious thing. But it's not a religious thing. He says, you will be a blessing. How many know that you would like to be a blessing? You'll be a blessing. Now, what is, he, what, is he, what is he saying here? Benediction is a, is a word describing this word blessing. This is what it says about it in Webster's Dictionary. The act of blessing, of giving praise to God or rendering thanks for his favors. Blessings, blessing pronounced, hence grace before and after meals. Blessing, prayer, or kind wishes uttered in favor of, of any person or thing. Uttered in favor. Listen, kind wishes. In other words, you are going to be kind wishes uttered in favor of any person or thing. Number three, this is the one I really want you to get grab hold of. The advantage conferred by blessing. The advantage conferred by blessing. Where do we see this sort of thing? When the king would send out his uh, uh, messengers, or when he'd send a message to somebody, it was with the blessing of the king. And that messenger would bring that letter of blessing to a person and saying, the king is in your favor to give this land to you. In other words, it was a blessing from the king to that person for that land. God the Father, he is saying to us, blessing, you shall be a blessing, praise God. So everywhere we go, we become a blessing to the people around us. Let me give you some New Testament and some Old Testament scriptures just to wrap this up. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Proverbs 11, verse 25. Proverbs 11, verse 25. says, whoever brings blessing will be enriched, and one who waters will himself be watered. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. says, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Well, we'll finish there. I, I gave you, I gave you a, a meal now from heaven for you to chew on. We have a meal downstairs waiting for our stomachs, <laughs> our earthly stomachs. It seems like there's a lot of distraction with the food downstairs. So, so we might as well uh, uh, close her up right now. And um, amen? Okay. Anyways, before we go, is there anybody you want us to pray for something? Is there something you want us to pray about this morning? The Bible says, whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. The Bible also says, Jesus himself said, that if the two of us agree is touching anything on this earth, it shall be done. Yes, Josh. He needs encouragement? Okay. What happened with his stuff? Okay. 
right? Okay. Let's pray for Mark as it, it uh, was bad news for the court. Um, so let's pray for Mark. And let's pray that he stays strengthened, encouraged uh, during this time. Yeah. Father God, we lift up Mark before you right now. We thank you that, Lord, that he is born again, saved, sanctified. And, Lord God, I I pray that his faith would be encouraged, his faith would be built up, and that, Lord, he would hear your words, receive your words, and, Lord, bear fruit in your words. I thank you, Lord God, that no matter what the outcome was on, on the Thursday's court case, things can always be changed. And, Father God, I thank you right now, just as... Just as uh, 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 Paul and Silas began to worship God in prison, the prison doors popped open. The shackles fell off. And the prison guard was going to commit suicide because he thought the guards were were gone. But then Paul cried out and said, don't hurt yourself. And that guard gave his life to Jesus. And I thank you, Lord God, that as, as, as... Whatever situation Mark is in, I thank you, Lord God, that all things work together for good to them that love you and are called according to your purpose. I thank you that no weapon formed against them shall prosper in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God, for this. We thank you for your goodness right now. Thank you for helping Mark. Thank you for strengthening Mark. Thank you, Lord God, that his faith is being built up in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that he's hearing the word, the good, right words, the good word of God. And that, Lord, he's hearing them and he's receiving them. We thank you for this in Jesus' mighty name. Anyone else for a prayer? Something you want us to pray about? Whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive it and you'll have it. Okay. What's that? Yeah, so pray for Justin Trudeau, and let's pray for uh, uh, Joe, who's had... And what are we believing for, uh, Guy? Completely healed. Okay. What does that mean? Does that that mean no more pain? Okay. No more stiffness. Right on. And and as we pray for Justin Trudeau, what are you believing for, uh, um, Jen? You haven't been here so long, I, I had to think for a moment. <laughs> that he's come to the Christ, change his thinking, right? Oh, okay, so Josh is saying Bill C-7, 11. C-11 went through the Senate which is now the government's going to control what you see on the Internet. Yeah. Yeah, so, so this Liberal Party with the NDP, because the Liberals and NDP were the ones that pushed it through the, par- the Common House for it to go to Senate. Um, so the Liberals and NDP are in agreement that, that Canadians sh- don't know what they should be watching, so they need to step in and start controlling what you and I watch. That's communism, by the way. That's dictatorship. Are, anybody who votes for liberals and NDP, you're voting for this country to become communist. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There is just, I'm just going to throw that out. Right now, me saying it would be censored. It would be censored. Yeah. And now, we'll see how it plays out. But let's pray against this. Let's pray against this. Jesus, we come before you right now. We li- First, we lift up Joe to you. Command that pain and that stiffness out of that back in Jesus' name. Healed and whole and the cause of it gone in Jesus' mighty name. Every back, every back, every pain gone out of people's backs right now in Jesus' name. 
whole in the name of Jesus. And the cause of it gone in Jesus' name. And Lord, right now we lift up Justin Trudeau before you right now. Lord, that, it, that he would come to hear the gospel truth and that he would give his life to Jesus. We bind every devil and demon that's been causing him to be blinded to the truth. We bind those demon spirits. We bind those wicked spirits, those principalities and powers. We cast them out of Trudeau's life right now and out of the liberals and the NDP party's life in Jesus' name. And we cast them out in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we pray that the glorious gospel would be preached unto Justin Trudeau and to all the liberals in the NDP. And that they would come to Jesus. And that they would come to Jesus. We thank you for this right now. And, Lord, that he would, they would all realize the, the wickedness that they have been pushing. And that they would stop it in Jesus' name. And, Lord God, we thank you right now that Bill uh, C-11 be turned in Jesus' name, stopped in Jesus' name, and struck down in Jesus' name. Lord, may the population of Canada rise up and say, enough of you interfering into our lives. In Jesus' name. I pray for the nation of Canada that they would rise up and begin, that they would wake up and see what's going on. And that they would begin to see the wickedness that's been pushed, being pushed. That parliamentarians aren't able to vote on things because the Trudeau and the NDP were pushing things through without even a, a discussion. Lord, in Jesus' name, this stuff has to stop. In Jesus' name. And it stops in the name of Jesus. And that Canadians uh, uh, begin to see it. They begin to realize what's going on. And they see that right from the uh, uh, COVID nonsense and, and all that stuff that was going on there, Lord God, that they would realize that the government has really been interfering into our lives way too much. And they think they have a free pass to go and do whatever they want to do because of what ha they were able to do with COVID. And Lord, it stops in Jesus' name. May the nation of Canada rise up and say enough is enough. In the name of Jesus. I pray that every person, young and old, female, male, Lord, uh, no matter the nationality, all Canadian citizens in Jesus' name, uh, rise up and begin to say, enough is enough. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, may there be such a public backlash to the actions of the government that it would cause the government to change your mind and change the bills. In Jesus' name. And Lord, this brings me to another point. The news, the liberal guided news of our day in Canada. Lord, we, there needs to be a new voice that rises up and tells Canadian the truth. And not liberal truth or liberal twisted truth. But Lord God, that the, there be a, a, another voice that rises up and begins to declare what is really going on. And that more and more people can hear it, praise God. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Anyone else? Something you want us to pray about? That was a big one. <laughs> Anyone else? Well, let's pray for the food and let's head downstairs. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for this uh, time in your word. We thank you for your word. It is living. It is powerful. It is truth. It sets people free. We thank you for your word today. It has tested. It's been tested, tried, and tested over thousands of years, and it has stood the tests. It has stood up, and it continues to be the best, number one selling book in the world. I thank you for your word. I thank you that it's going forward. I thank you, Lord God, that things are changing here in Canada, here in Flin Flon, here in our lives, in our neighborhoods, in Jesus' name. And I thank you that you're helping us, guiding us, directing us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for living inside of us. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for all the, th the things that you've given to us. Thank you for the blessing of Abraham. Thank you that we're multiplied abundantly. In Jesus' name, we thank you for this today. And so, Lord, as we head downstairs, we pray blessings upon our food that is blessed and sanctified and nourishing to our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming. Have a great day. Yeah? Hi. <laughs>
Oh, you want us to pray about something? Okay. Okay, there's, uh, Trina wants us to pray about something. Need the microphone to? Okay, this is you're asking for a prayer request, right? Okay, just tell me. Okay. 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 So what do you want us to pray about? The Bible says, whatever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it and you'll have it. So what, what can you see is going to change in this situation? Okay. 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 And you said your, fam your family is into that stuff? And he's going to live with them, then he shouldn't be living there with them. Let's, so why don't we pray that he lives somewhere else? Okay. Right. Okay. So why don't we pray for him to live in a place that's drug-free, alcohol-free, right? And he won't be influenced by that stuff. So, Father God, we come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Can you see him living in a new place, a good place? Do you see that? Father, I thank you right now that uh, Trina's brother is not going into a place that's going to be uh, influenced by drugs and alcohol. But, Lord, that he's going to be moving into a place that's free of that stuff. Because the Bible does say, bad company corrupts good behavior. It was in the Bible already. So, Lord, we pray for Trina's brother that he would not move with his relatives, not be with them, but that, Lord, he would live in a place that is free of that kind of influence and bad influence into that kind of stuff in Jesus' name. And, Lord God, I thank you that you open the doors for him right now to move into a new place, uh, not with Trina, but, Lord, a, a place for himself. That is going to be a good place, a healthy place, a place where he hears the word of God. And Lord, I thank you right now that he will hear the word of God and receive the word of God. Receive Jesus as his Lord and Savior and walk in the ways of you, Lord. Thank you for this time. Thank you for, Lord, answers to prayer. Thank you for this turnaround in his life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen? Good? <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we head downstairs and um, enjoy the food? Amen? Oh, and also Mindy has uh, envelopes or those who you've given to everybody? Okay.